Greetings everyone, this is Randy, um, November 2, Charlie United Alpha. Um, <clears throat> I was asked by a couple of viewers whether or not it was advisable to buy, for example, the Regal DSA815 without the tracking generator option, or say perhaps they have a spectrum analyzer already and don't have a tracking generator option, and they're wondering if they could just use a uh, frequency generator of some sort that has a sweep function so that you could somehow use that as a tracking generator <coughs> and still be able to characterize um, different devices like amplifiers and filters and things like that and the short answer is yeah you kinda can the long answer is it's kinda complicated a little bit and time definitely time consuming but it is possible it looks like and the other question is is the data that you get doing that use, uh, usable and you know the answer to that is I would say it's usable data I'd say it's at least close to being um, as accurate if done properly as using a spectrum analyzer with the tracking generator option However, in the case of the DSA A15, you know, $200 more for the tracking generator? Yeah, really? It would be worth the time that you wait to save up those extra $200. I really believe that with all my heart. Okay, <clears throat> well, let me show you why this is really tough to do it separately. I'm going to do a little analogy here. Hopefully, I won't uh, make it look too ridiculous. <laughs> okay, but okay, when you were, uh, first off, when the, when the uh, spectrum analyzer is working and it's sweeping across the span of frequencies you're looking for, it's like that you have this window, it's called the resolution bandwidth, and that is a window um, that it's looking for a signal in while it's sweeping. Okay, so if this is, say, one kilohertz wide and it's starting at zero and going to, uh, to 200 megahertz, as it goes across the screen, okay, this is however many kilohertz wide I said, let's say five kilohertz, I forgot what I said now. Anyway, as it's sweeping across, say you go five, ten, fifteen, twenty, and at twenty there's a signal and it's at twenty looking, that's where that window is, it'll see that signal, okay? Now, if it's going across, say it's like at five, ten, fifteen, twenty, and then a signal pops up at fifteen, well this is at twenty, you're not going to see it because it's not in that window, okay? Now then the idea behind a tracking generator is that it's synced with the uh, window on the analyzer that it's looking for the signal in. So it's kind of like this, and they're kind of going across, and it's generating the signal, which is the bottom one here, in the same window uh, that it's looking for a signal up here. So if it does go through whatever the amplifier or filter or whatever it is you're checking out, it'll show up on the screen because they both track the, the generator output tracks the window that it's receiving on to look for a, uh, a given signal. Okay, so it's going across like this. Now the problem you run into when you try to use a separate one, unless there's a way to sync them up, and at least in the case of the uh, Regal DG4162, which is what I used, and then my DSA15, there is no way to sync them up. The only thing I could do is cause one to trigger the other, so I could tell the uh, frequency generator when I hit the trigger button, <clears throat> it would signal the spectrum analyzer and say, okay, start your sweep. But even doing that, I could not get them to track together because they're different instruments and one sweep time might be a little different, the time bases might be a little different. It just, it, and no matter how hard I tried, I just couldn't get that to work, but I, I really did work on that for a couple of hours and it's just not happening. Okay, <clears throat> so here's what happens. I mean, you have this one sweeping along looking at one rate, and you have this, the uh, frequency generator going along at another rate, and you may or may, they may or may not hit. That's the problem. Okay, so you may or not. So how do you do this then? You know, what do you do? And so the best solution I could find was to allow the um, frequency generator to sweep at a lower speed or lower rate rather um, and I've used 60 seconds for a lot of it I've done up to 120 seconds depending on what I'm doing 
and then have a faster sweep rate on the analyzer because what you're looking for is a bunch of sample points basically I don't know if you really call them samples, but I guess they are. <clears throat> so as this one's sweeping across really slowly, the generator, this is the generator, is sweeping really slow. This one's going like this, really fast, sweep, sweep, sweep. So it's going to keep hitting those and keep putting those points on the screen. Well, when I say putting them on the screen, I'll tell you in a minute what I'm talking about. So what you're doing is, um, on this there's a function under trace uh, called max hold. Okay, when you hit that, every time it gets a hit, it sees a signal, it puts it on the screen and it leaves it there okay so if you do that think about that if you get enough times where um, the generator is seen by the uh, analyzer it's going to put that on the screen and leave it there do that thousands of times eventually you're going to get a trace and so I, I'm not going to do any of the actual setup or um, actually perform one right now. This is just kind of a part one. Just letting you know it is kind of possible, but it's tricky. In fact, um, <laughs> I was going to use an analogy off of the last Star Trek movie and all copyright and credits to, you know, everybody that, um, as far as uh, this Gene Roddenberry and all that. Anyway, so um, no infringements intended. Um, in the movie, um, Scotty was talking with Spock about trying to transport to a ship while it was in warp and he said it was like trying to shoot a bullet with a smaller bullet while riding a horse blindfolded and that's kind of what this feels like <laughs> so anyway that's the analogy anyway, I've recorded a couple traces because I wanted to show you that it is possible and oh another issue was <clears throat> I tried well, was an issue, but it's something I want to be sure of before I did the video for you, was I did um, my RF attenuators. You've seen those other videos. That worked okay. That's a really wide bandwidth, like 400 megahertz. I've done my bandpass filter from my um, HF rig. It's a low-pass filter. There's a video um, on my uh, channel on that. So I tried that and it worked. And then I also did one on a 9 megahertz crystal filter, which is really narrow. See, the other one's really wide bandwidth, or reasonably wide. This one was really narrow, like 700 hertz, and I wasn't sure if that one was going to work. And that was a little trickier, but I did pull it off. It took a while. It took me like half an hour to get that one to come out. So, again, it takes a lot of time. And if you're looking for signals that are just there for a few seconds and gone doing this, don't bother because it's not going to work, okay? This is strictly, you know like I said, band passes or band widths, whatever, that's solid, no intermittent stuff there going on, okay, at all, <clears throat> if there is, you're probably going to miss it. Um, and again, if you want stuff like that, if you want to be able to hit signals that are, get signals that are intermittent in nature or, you know, whatever, just, just get the tracking generator option, really, okay. Um, <clears throat> so, I stored a couple here on C storage. This first one is an SSB filter, 9 megahertz filter, well, ish, 9 megahertz ish, um, 700 hertz wide, so it's really narrow. I had to bring the resolution bandwidth way down <clears throat> to like 100 hertz to do this. That's why it took so long. The higher the bandwidth, uh, the resolution bandwidth setting, the quicker it was to capture the data. Uh, using the sweep generator and, and the spectrum analyzer in this manner. So again, not something I suggest, but it's uh, it was an interesting adventure, I'll have to say that. Okay, <clears throat> so here's the first one. This is the SSB filter. Um, page 2, recall. Okay, and if you look at my other videos, I think I did a filter in that. That looks pretty close, I believe, to the waveform I had in my videos. That took a long time to capture because the sweep with the resolution bandwidth down to 100 hertz um, even that narrow it just was a really long sweep time on the analyzer which means the frequency generator had to be just that much more so it means it took you that much longer to do it <clears throat> and I've also noticed the ratio somewhat of about a thousand times so and I'm gonna run out of battery here wonderful um, anyway, that's one. Let's do the other one really quick before I lose my battery, and then we'll go to a part two on the, when we decide to actually show you how to do that. It was tricky, so I'm going to take me a while to get that set up to work right. Anyway, here's the uh, second one. This one 
is of a piece of coax, like a quarter away stub kind of a thing. It was resonant at 80.5 megahertz, as it says on the screen. So, yeah, it is possible this one is easier because it's a little bit wider. Didn't have to have the resolution bandwidth so low. It didn't take as long. But it, again, the point being, it was possible, and it is usable. So, we'll leave it at that. Catch you guys on the next video. I'll try to show you how I did a couple of these and actually perform them for you. And uh, hopefully uh, it's all made sense. And thanks for watching. Thanks for watching my channel. Appreciate it. And to see you later. Saying 7-3 for now.